Right in our backyard lies a ledge, 30 miles offshore, home to some of the baddest fish that swim in the ocean. Anglers all throughout the Florida Keys run large center console boats out to these grounds to conquer heavy seas and a potential fish of a lifetime. Today, we're putting what we got to the test, as we're extremely underpowered based on the sheer power that the ocean and these fish can possess. But when the seas are this calm, there's nothing that stands between us and the thought of reeling in creatures from the deep. Next stop, is 32 miles offshore. We're gonna be fishing in 1,500 feet of water on a 23-foot bay boat. Gotta do what you gotta do. But the biggest thing is though, when it's a sheet of glass like it is today, you could come out here and fish on any boat you want. But the biggest thing to remember, is just because when you go out it's calm, doesn't mean it's gonna be calm coming in on the way back. So you always wanna make sure you're checking your forecast because the last thing you wanna do is be caught 30 miles offshore and not be able to get home because the seas are just too big. But things are looking absolutely perfect for today. So right now what I'm doing is I'm setting up our drift. You never just wanna pull up somewhere and just drop your gear. Reason why is because you wanna figure out which way your boat's going to go before you drop your gear. And what I mean by gear is the entire rig down on the bottom. So I'm just trying to kind of calculate how we're going to drift over my swordfish numbers right here. So this is where we want to start and eventually we'll drift right on top of the numbers. What we need to do is attach those lights so that way the swordfish sees the bait. Once it sees it, it's going to be attracted to it by these lights. And then... Yeah. If you notice, these are the disco colors. Yeah. So if we catch a swordfish to today, yeah, that, that swordfish <laughs> definitely likes to party. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be partying up on this, on this bow. It's like, I wanna be formal, but I still like to party. Right. So right here, we're not tying knots. We're actually crimping. And once you start getting into bigger fish, and bigger leaders, a crimp is going to be stronger than any knot you could potentially tie. Here's a lovely mahi belly. That's what we're gonna be sending down. And it's exactly what it's, it's titled, a mahi belly. It's at the bottom portion of the mahi. <laughs> Making sure that this thing has a nice swing to it. So what we're doing right now is we're traveling down current, baits in the water, first lights going, and then second and third. Last thing we gotta do is drop down our weight. We attach it by a little wax loop we have there on the leader. Next thing we're gonna do now, let her rip. Five hundred? Yep. All right, time to make our turn. And the reason why we're making this turn right now is because everything is stretched out. And we do that, we stretch everything out so that way the weight doesn't tangle around the bait and the lights and everything else on the way down. And now that we're making that turn, we're gonna come right back around and eventually we'll get right back on top of the weight, the entire rig, and then we are sword fishing. 1,500 feet down in total darkness, we're talking about a whole different world. In the fish's perspective, human beings are aliens as the feeling is mutual in some cases. As we drift on the ocean surface, which covers more than 70% of Earth, where 80% still remains unexplored, you know the swordfish aren't alone. Therefore, as soon as we hit the bottom, we have our first taker completely clueless towards what it could be. Oh, oh, oh! We're on! Oh, no, we're, yeah, we're on. Look, it's digging. Yeah, it's digging, like it's fighting. So we originally had plans of tying the rod up in the manner that we're doing it right now. Right. We never even got a chance to because as soon as we got on the bottom, we got tight. The reason why we're doing this 
is because in our past experience using this reel on this bay boat, we've actually, yeah, we've ripped the rod holder out of this gunnel. So, since then, I've reinforced the rod holder. I put a starboard plate underneath there. However, I still am not taking any chances. So I'm tying the reel to the actual leaning post here. After a full hour and 30 minutes later, finally, we've reached the weight. Removing the weight properly is an imperative part of the fight as we want to make sure to keep tension on the line to prevent the hook from slipping out of the fish's mouth. Throughout the fight, we were playing the guessing game towards what this fish could actually be. Ultimately though, something wasn't right. The fish stopped pulling drag and it had zero head shakes. However, we still have something massive attached on the other end, so we're not giving up. What? No! It's a shark. It's a massive shark. I don't know, put the boat in gear. Put the boat in gear. What? <laughs> Look, Look at that. that. Wow, That's a man. big shark. Look at his tail. That's sick. I've never seen one of these types of sharks. He's Look at lazy. his teeth on him. It's crazy because his mouth is much smaller than his body if you were to compare him to an, like a, I don't know, any other type of shark. He's definitely got some teeth on him. And look at the way his head look is at his shaped. Eyeball. The head is shaped so differently. Yeah, it's like so narrow. Yeah. Where's that knee hook? That's a picture right there. Yeah, take a picture. Get his head. That's pretty sweet, man. First thresher ever on the bay boat. We're gonna try to get this hook back. So, we met Zach at a new Italian restaurant down here in the Keys. He's a waiter there. We got to talking and he's like, you know, I used to film and I really want to get back into it. We brought a lot of videographers out here, but as the first one that I've ever brought out here for the first time in the ocean that's gotten in the water with a shark. That was awesome. <laughs> You have them on. I think you have them on. No. no? Yeah, you do. No. 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 I think we're really just gonna have to wait on it. So sword fishing can either be a really long day or a really successful day. Let's hope that Clay. Ooh. We're tight, baby. We're tight. We're tight. It is one o'clock. We've been out here since eight o'clock this morning doing this, just watching a rod tip. I was literally almost about to fall asleep and I just saw a bite. One little tick, two, three, four, five, and they just kept on going. And I kept on trying to set the hook. He wouldn't eat it. Finally, we just waited. We were patient. Next thing you know, we're hooked up on a swordfish. There's a very big difference sword fishing off the bay boat versus a center console because this boat right here is meant to go to the sandbar. This is meant to go inshore and catch snook, redfish. And there's a lot of things in life that are gonna challenge you. And one thing I can say is fishing off of the back of this boat today has been very, very challenging. So challenging to the point where I was just thinking about packing up and going home. But next thing you know, we're hooked up to a swordfish. And basically the message that I'm trying to spread to you guys is, you know, whatever it is, Things are hard, 
It's always going to be difficult, but persistence is what ultimately always pays off. And this is a real life moment of persistence right here. This time, we're sure it's a swordfish. Anything can happen at this point as the anticipation is heightened past our breaking point as this fish is still 1,500 feet below the boat. But even if we lose this fish, we still have to be thankful we're even here. Some travel thousands of miles and spend well over thousands of dollars multiple trips in a row just for this moment right here. However, here we are 30 miles offshore in a bay boat in our backyard connected to a fish of a lifetime. There he is. See him? At the surface. Yep. Here he nice is. Nice little sortie. Something. Oh, you know what? He's got hooked. Look at his mouth. His mouth is open, straight open in the bottom. That's insane, man. We're not getting swordfish for dinner, but hey, we'll take it. Little swordfish for a little boat. I gotta be very careful with this thing. And that's why you don't play around with them. They don't call them a swordfish for nothing. So swordfish actually have an organ that'll heat up their brain so that way they can function. Because down there it's ridiculously cold. Where there's no sunlight, no heat, no nothing. He's tired though. So what we're doing right now is we're just keeping the boat in motion so that way when we send him off he's got a lot of oxygen flowing through his body because this fish fought hard and it fought for a long time that's why they call him a broad bill swordfish look at how broad it gets towards the end there but if you look at that look at his bill it's all chipped up and everything that's from slashing in the mud fighting things like mako sharks. I don't know if one this small necessarily would pick a fight with a mako, but rumor has it that there's been mako sharks found with swordfish bills broken off in their mouth. So this is one bad fish. We're gonna send him on his way. Thanks for the fight, buddy. There he goes, back down to the bottom. Mission accomplished, baby, and it doesn't get any better than that. So we thought, as we were running in, we found a big patch of seaweed and we threw a couple casts and immediately we were hooked up to a mahi. So I guess it does get better than that. But at the end of the day, today has been unreal. The success that you see in this video is the same success that we strive for in our clothing company and my wife's new venture as a real estate agent here in the Florida Keys. And ultimately, we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing if it weren't for our viewers. So thank you all for an amazing year. Thanks for taking us this far. Until next time, here's the 2022.